Thanks so much for talking to me about your book today. Um, I have a number of questions about it, as I'm sure many other teachers have. Um, and I, I would like to say especially thank you very much for allowing us to have this interview in your beautiful, stunning summer place uh, here in Gisborne, New Zealand. The book that we're going to talk about today, the book which is called Key Issues in, in Language Teaching, uh, it's a very comprehensive book, uh, over 800 pages. And I wonder if you could tell me a bit about why you ever took on this project. It's a, such a huge project. Well, I guess I thought there wasn't a book like this around. And when I was doing my studies, there were big comprehensive books like these written by your former director, David Stern, for example, and Wilga Rivers. And I'd always wanted to have a chance to write a big overview kind of book that sort of covers the field in fair detail from my point of view. Um, that was one of the goals that uh, I've had for myself as well as the other goal was to write a basic series, like the Interchange series. So I'd always had those two uh, goals in mind, and, and Cambridge uh, were brave enough to take this one on. Um, and, and that's what really um, started the process, you might say, yeah. How did you go about writing this book? What was the actual process that you um, took on in, in, in writing this book? Well, I knew this would be a big a big job, and I felt I needed professional help. So. I asked uh, an editor who had worked with me on other projects, a freelance editor, Debbie Goldblatt, who uh, had worked in the New York office of Cambridge for many years. I asked her if she would serve as a sort of uh, editorial consultant. So everything I wrote, I passed to Debbie, and she read it very critically, you know, to see, is this clear enough? Is this what you meant? This needs to be redone, and so on. So I worked with Debbie for um, the whole project, really. Um, in addition, of course, Cambridge hired uh, reviewers to look at things as I wrote the chapters and they gave very, very strong feedback. I also invited a couple of colleagues to read everything I'd written and they reviewed it and so on. And then as the chapters began to shape up, I asked specialists in the different areas I was writing about to also review the chapters. So a huge amount of, uh, of revision, rethinking uh, to, to get a book like this to its final form. When you started writing the book, who did you intend to write it for? Who do you expect to be your readers? When I was writing the book, I was really thinking of the sort of teachers that I often work with in different parts of the world, uh, some experienced, some novice teachers, uh, who were looking for, for a fairly comprehensive but very uh, readable and accessible overview of each of the topics that I was uh, writing about. So it's, it's teachers who are new to teaching, uh, plus those who are coming back to do graduate courses. So it's intended really for use in a graduate program as well as a, a, a course for the uh, teachers could go in, dip into to upgrade their knowledge on different topics that they might be interested in. They may, may not be interested in the whole book, for example, but particular chapters might be very relevant to them. I noticed that there's an e-version of this textbook as well. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the differences between the two. Right. Well, these days, of course, big books like these are often accompanied by an e-book, so the students or the users have a choice. For the e-book, um, I recorded a video overview of each chapter, and also I interviewed eight specialists on different topics uh, throughout the book. So the e-book um, is accessible through a mobile device, but in addition it has these other components that only um, an e-book can provide, that is the, the video um, additional components of the course. Uh, could you tell me a bit about how you've organized the content of this book? Um, it's organized into a number of different sections. Some sections deal with learning, some with the classroom, some with teaching the language skills, some with uh, the teacher's working context, use of technology, textbooks, uh, curriculum, and so on. So we've organized the book uh, through its development into separate sections, really, that, that uh, serve to, in a sense, to structure and frame the development of the book as a whole. I was interested to see that one of the chapters in, is about um, teaching uh, young, uh, young learners, uh, adolescents and adults 
Uh, why did you include this chapter? I thought it was important to focus on the the age factor in language learning because teaching children is very different from teaching teenagers which is very different from teaching adults. So we decided to include in the book a fairly detailed account of the different ways in which age affects the language learning process and also the, the pedagogy, the teaching methods that we, we use. And particularly these days with a greater emphasis on teaching English at, uh, for very young learners, we thought that would be an important uh, a important point to bring into the book. When I say we, I'm talking about the editors that I worked with in Cambridge who helped guide me in terms of uh, content and organization. Do you also uh, address the role of technology in, in this book? Yes, that of course you can't avoid these days because every learner makes use of technology and teaches as well. So there's a fairly comprehensive overview of how technology is used these days in language teaching and in particular how it can be used to enhance the teaching of the four skills, grammar and uh, pronunciation. One thing that I liked in particular about this book were the vignettes, the stories, the little bits and pieces that um, various uh, professionals around the world uh, told and are included in your book throughout the book. I wonder um, if you could tell me how you found those people. Right. Well, I thought it important to have the opinions of teachers, the drawing on teachers' classroom experience. So uh, I contacted a number of teachers that, that I knew could write in this way, who I've met on my tours here and there. I also contacted colleagues in the field to see if they could also identify teachers who'd be willing to write short vignettes. And so throughout each chapter, we have these little narratives or comments from teachers on particular issues that occur throughout each chapter. So I think it brings a more kind of teacher-friendly uh, uh, treatment to the topics as, as I write about them. What are some of the other features uh, of the book that would be of particular interest to, the, to teachers? Well, I've tried to um, include lesson plans, for example. Teachers have provided me with lesson plans that relate to the different topics that are covered in the book, teaching grammar, teaching pronunciation, teaching reading. Um, we have a number of case studies, for example, and also extracts from textbooks to illustrate some of the points made about how uh, different aspects of language are taught, for example. To what extent is the book informed by both research and theory? Well, as I planned each chapter, of, uh, of course, I looked at what the research says about that particular issue, whether it be teaching of pronunciation or teaching reading, what the current state of knowledge is. I also looked at what some of the pedagogical principles were that have been developed in approaches to the teaching of reading, grammar, whatever it might be. But also, of course, uh, through the teachers that I worked with, looking at how uh, classroom teachers approach these issues themselves. So it's basically theory, research, plus practitioner informed throughout. The, the book is intended um, for teachers. What do you think are some of the real challenges that face uh, teachers in today's world? Well, one of the issues, I think, is that learners want quick results. Uh, they often have very specific needs. They're getting ready for an interview, or maybe they're going to an international conference, or they, they have to pass a particular test. So no, learners these days um, want fairly practical results, and they don't want to invest a huge amount of time on learning, on achieving these results. So that's one of the pressures that uh, teachers have to work with. And also in many contexts, um, they're driven by tests. Either the Common European Framework is used as a reference for tests and so on, or national or local tests. So students, are, I think, have very uh, specific outcomes that they often have to work towards. And so they expect teachers to be able to deliver those results. You've had a long career, Jack, in, in language teaching, in English language teaching. I wonder if you could talk a bit about the um, ways the book reflects some of the changes that have happened in your career. Well, yeah, there are indeed many changes. One, for example, just the nature of English. What, Engli who, what is English? Who owns it? Um, you, you know, the role of the native speaker versus the non-native speaker of English. And so the, the internationalization of education as well as the globalization that uh, we see in all aspects of the economy and, and, and uh, communication these days has affected the role English plays as it's spread around the world. So that's one thing that I touch on in a number of chapters, the, the nature of English as an international language. Um, I suppose another change is um, the fact that teachers are expected to know a lot more these days. Not only do they have a good knowledge of English, they have to have a good knowledge of their subject matter. So the whole professional 
um, expertise, the professional knowledge base of English teaching has expanded a lot and that's why I've tried to cover what I consider to be, if you like, some of the core professional knowledge of uh, expected of language teachers today. So, so teachers are expected to know more and to be also flexible, to be able to use technology, to be able to use different teaching, different teaching methods, to create their own teaching resources and so on. So the, the whole language teaching industry is very dynamic and I think um, uh, is growing. More and more people are learning English these days. They expect courses, teachers and materials to, to really be up to date and deliver them with the, the, the skills that they need. Thank you so much for talking to me today about um, your new book, which I'm very sure will be an extremely useful resource for both new teachers and for experienced teachers. Thank you very much.